Hello, and welcome to the podcast about Transformers comics, toys, and everything in between. I'm Monarchs Prime with my two co-hosts here. Hi, I'm Compu Charm. Hi, I'm Kilobyte. Moving on with our comic discussion for today's episode takes us to IDW Transformers Chaos Theory Volume 5. And as always, spoiler warning. So if you haven't read it already, we highly recommend you go back, read it, then come back to listen to the podcast. Because why would you want to spoil it for yourself? So I've also heard from some of my Earthlings that if you click that like button on this video or audio, whatever your platform is, and subscribe, that really helps us grow. And we'd really appreciate that, and we thank you for it. Now, onwards to the podcast. Both Computron and myself have read this series already, but this is Kilobyte's first time, and we are excited to hear his thoughts about it. But before we can get into that, Computron, do you mind telling us some fun facts? Okay, so, you know, usual, first things first, hard stuff. So, uh, issue 19 of the Transformers, also known as the first arc of Chaos Theory, was released May 18th, 2011, and the ending of this arc issue uh was i think issue number 23 ended august 10th 2011 the writer was mike costa and james roberts and the artist was guido guidi brendan cahill 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 <laughs> and alex milne and colors were by joanna la fuente okay so fun facts in issue one of the arc along with the teeth um Wheelie is wearing the translation device of his alien buddy, Varta, last seen on Spotlight Wheelie, whose absence is not explained in this story. Varta's fate would be revealed in the aforementioned Robots in Disguise number 10, in which he was shown to be killed by a time-traveling, spoiler, <laughs> stay tuned, before the event of this issue. Um... This issue, or that issue, would also show that Wheelie had to relocate from LV-117 to 118 because the planet was destroyed by a mysterious force later to be revealed. Again, spoilers. Please just read the comics. <laughs> we'll get there. <laughs> In this 22nd issue, Megatron's serial number is 071-980. is an apparent reference to July 1980 the month in which Marvel's Shogun Warrior number 18 was published, in which the name Megatron was first used by the company. The unnamed senator in issue 23 was scripted as Senator X and not intended to be anyone, but Roberts immediately thought it'd be cool to reveal he was someone we knew. Kilobyte, any theories, buddy? I think think it's shock. <laughs> I'm not telling you. Anyway, Kilobyte, <laughs> do you mind giving us a short summary of these comics? <laughs> Sure can. <laughs> so Someone mean. read the spoilers. <laughs> I had read nothing. Uh, Rodimus finds himself stranded on a desolated planet where he encounters potential allies. Who could it be? Well, let's find out. Yes, we shall. And as always, this information has been taken from the wiki. We have a full course meal to uh, eat up here, you know what I mean? Like all the other times, it was like, oh, you get the, uh, you get the appetizer, you get the... The meat and the potatoes. This one gives you everything. <laughs> it's like a whole platter. Yes. The full Energon appetizer and dessert. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> All right, let's dive into this. So we find out Rodmus survives being shot by Megatron only because the Matrix itself that he was holding lodges its way into his chest to keep him online. But the planet he wakes up on is not a fun one. Thoughts? We got to get him to the jingle, man. <laughs> uh, for anybody that knows what I'm talking about. Uh, he wakes up on a planet and uh, he wakes up with these. Uh, w what do you call these species of uh, aliens? I don't think that's ever really recognized. I'm sure they have a name in the database somewhere, but uh, let's just call them big green goblins. Yeah, he wakes <laughs> up with these big green goblins. And the first thing they say is... Uh, when they find him, is we gotta get him to the Jangle Man. But uh, they didn't really take him to the Jangle Man, did they? No, they did not. What happened, Kilobyte? He gets taken to their leader, and their leader uh, straps Rodimus to a sort of a slab and tries to use the Matrix as a power source, making it all explode. <laughs> <laughs> yeah very very interesting stuff mind you this leader likes to be called an admiral right wasn't he just like some sci lackey scientist on the ship that <laughs> crash landed 
Yes, he dubbed himself as Admiral, which is yeah. very much, you know, a thing that I could see happening in this scenario. <laughs> uh, they mentioned that, uh, or I think he mentions it or something, that he just called himself Admiral because he was a superior intelligence than the other two. Yes, so he was, absolutely. he was fit to lead, and I'm like, okay, sure. <laughs> it's good stuff. Yeah. <laughs> Eventually, we find Wheelie. Wheelie is back. We haven't seen him since... Spotlight Wheelie. Since Spotlight Wheelie, right? Yep. Wow, it's been a while. Have I seen him? I don't think I've seen him before. I don't I think don't we know. ever covered Spotlight Wheelie. Yeah. No, I don't think so. So, uh, sorry about that. <laughs> <laughs> so, moving on to the next bit. Eventually, we get back to Cybertron. And Ironhide and Sunstreaker are the first to welcome home Rodimus, who they thought was also dead. I like that. I like that because Ironhide just kicks down the door to their ship. And he's like ready to shoot. He just has a bunch of uh, weapons in hand. And then he sees Rodimus. He's like, Rodimus! And just gives him a hug. <laughs> and I'm that like, wow, really oh, that's just a little bit sad as well. Because you don't remember what happened. <laughs> Before, before like that whole thing, right? Because they, we have like a whole jump right in between there, like because we have like uh, Rodimus meeting Wheelie and everything, right? But like right when Wheelie met Rodimus, he was being chased by this monster, and like oh. I cracked up. My favorite line in this entire comic, even though there's a lot of great lines, is Wheelie when he was when he finds Rodimus, he straight up just says, "Monster, come because you're dumb." <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> busted up laughing. <laughs> um. Anyway, uh, we get to meet Bob, which sounds familiar. Uh, cues segue to checking out the D and D podcast. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. You mentioned Bob or a dog-like character in the last episode. Is this the one you're talking about? <laughs> yes. <laughs> What is the D and D podcast you're talking about? I don't remember Bob in that one. Our D and D podcast. Why, Mister Kilobyte? You want to take this segue? <laughs> hot potato. Hot potato. Hot potato. Hot potato. <laughs> Bob is the, the little alien that uh, Sephir is after, uh, trying to get revenge. Crazy. Anyway, I'm gonna well, pulse back towards two this different comic. Bobs. Yes, two different Bobs. <laughs> Back to the comic. So we meet Bob. Bob the Insecticon here. I like Bob. I like Bob too. Looks cool. Bob is Bob. Bob is Bob. So we also discover, along with the swarm, that Cybertron seems to be having another problem. Always with the problems, the Cybertron. We get (laughs) to see the planet is being swarmed not only by Insecticons, by also sweeps. Galvatron... Come to Cybertron. Absolutely. Which I like because it connects with the uh, the, the Heart of Darkness. Heart of Darkness, yeah. Computron's favorite. <laughs> no. No. <laughs> also on this point, uh, Wheelie has managed to remove the Matrix from Rodimus' chest. So it was, it was like melted into it and then he managed to remove it and Rodimus is still um, online. Was there ever a disclosed amount of time that Rodimus was out cold? Mm, I don't think so. I don't think they ever mentioned how long. They just said, oh, we just thought you were dead. <laughs> yeah. All right, um, so if I ever go camping in the woods, assume I'm dead. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, <laughs> jumping around here, uh, we, we go back to Earth, and we get kind of caught up with what was going on over there. Uh, B's alive, but B has a cane, and he's walking like uh, old man B now. Mm-hmm. And, uh, well, we, we finally get to see Prowl being, well, Prowl, which before is... We, before we get to the Prowl bit, I have a thing about the B and the cane thing. It's, I don't know why it's slightly... Unfortunate timing on B's part. He gets off his slab, has his cane, and says how great it is to walk again. Literally, the next panel, a person in a wheelchair comes by. (laughs) (laughs) Nice going, B. That's a little bit awkward. Way to um, how insensitive. uh, Consider it. All right, go ahead. (laughs) Sorry. (laughs) Wanted to bring that up. Uh, so now we get to see the shady version of Prowl, right? And this is 
gonna be the prowl we know from like the rest of the comics, which is not some lackey, but some shady dude. Yes, he's very much noir esque. A shady dude that likes to flip tables, man. <laughs> flip them tables. We'll see some of that soon. So stepping back a little bit, we we do end up with a flashback of pre-war with Megatron and Impactor at a bar. We get a little sneak peek at what is to come, but I think Computron, you and I, you and I know what I'm talking about here. Of course, I know what I'm talking about. Pay attention to every detail of that scene. Every detail. Kilobyte, what are your theories on this? Like, why is Impactor talking with Megatron? And furthermore, Computron, on page 69, there is a small, nice foreshadowing to come to think about. There's a lot more data bytes of information that could be considered foreshadowing. What's your thoughts here? Both of you, go. You know my thoughts, aren't you? <laughs> <laughs> well, um, when I read it, I noticed that Impactor also had the, the minor. Um, I don't know if it is that the detail or, or decal or whatever but they have some some yellow and black stripes which megatron also has so i assume they were both miners uh before the whole war happened and that's how they know each other and in this conversation if i'm not mistaken megatron's talking about how uh the society is just kind of like uh, unfair and kind of like he's starting into his philosophies and before he becomes the leader of the decepticons and so Impactor and him are having this discussion. Impactor is like, I, I, like I can solve problems with my fist, so he's like ready for the fight. So I don't know if uh, Impactor uh, in, in this comics are, is also going to be part of the Decepticons at one point and then uh, switch to the robots. Very interesting theories. And we see uh, the useless one there too. Say page 69? Page 69, yep. I'm not seeing anything on 69 other than... Are you, like, legitimate comic book page 69? It might not be the yes. digital version. It might be the physical. Because uh, if we're talking about the useless one. one, 71 for me. Or the useless one. I might be talking about something else, and I don't want to give it away. <laughs> but uh, there is one thing that I did love, which was the scene where um, we get to kind of be introduced to... Um, and then this is going to be a foreshadow later on uh worlds and megatron's relationship it starts on such a good foot <laughs> oh, absolutely <laughs> they're the bestest of friends <laughs> yeah. so moving us along optimus and megatron have a talk and a lot of happenings during this talk what would happen if megatron got his way what his view is if he conquered cybertron and then we get the flip side is like they also talk about when they first met before the war and what i like to point out about this they both misremember the first time they met i think that's interesting like they both think they first met each other on a battlefield at different times and at the end of this arc we find out truly when they first met what's your thoughts um i love it i love that um i think we got introduced like so if Correct me if I'm wrong, but like at the end of the arc, we kind of see Megatron kind of like walking out of the prison or the jail. Yeah. And like he throws something up into the sky and creates a symbol. Foreshadowing. Yeah. And uh, well, yeah. Right. And that was the that was the true first time they met is the is being released from the jail because Megatron never actually threw hands at that bar fight. Nope. So he, but, so he was uh, released. We have some pretty gnarly crap cops that, uh, and we're all being one of them, uh, beating up on Megatron in his jail cell. Yeah, while he was in waiting, yeah. Yep, those corrupt senates. Yeah, starting to feel for this Megatron guy. <laughs> yeah. I do like the, the art style for that, for those panels. Yes, yes, it's it's beautiful art. That's Alex Milne, my man. <laughs> sure is. <laughs> Uh, so we also discover that Optimus and Rodimus have like a talk about the Matrix because at this point both of them have bared it, and Optimus talks about how specifically how it hurts him the very first time he put the Matrix on, and Rodimus has the exact opposite feeling. When he puts it on, he's escaping Megatron, but he also gets 
not necessarily fully healed, but he's like sustained by the matrix. So it's like the matrix is like, protecting, right? Or am I off the beaten path? No, sure. Any theory is correct here. Well, unless they're wrong later, but you know. <laughs> Um, one thing I want to point out is because I really don't want to jump into this Senate scene yet because that's going to be a big thing to talk about. Yeah, yeah, jump around. Yeah, um, they're on page 79 on the actual comic is this gorgeous scene of Chaos Megatron sitting in a throne. And with the, in that throne are the heads of some of really, you know, Autobot favorites. We got oh, you're talking Grimlock. about the art gallery. Yeah. No, it's not the art gallery. It's on page seventy nine. It's just uh It's when they were having their discussion. Yeah. Oh yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. B's head, Prowl's head, Wheeljack's head, uh Ratchet's Grimlock's head, head right? Grimlock's head sitting on the top of the throne, and then like Megatron is sitting on the throne holding Optimus's head in his hand. Gorgeous art. Oh yeah. Gorgeous art. I don't know why, but it reminds me of the, the Game of Thrones. Yeah, the Iron Throne. <laughs> yeah. This is the spiky throne. I was getting like a Hamlet vibe, you know, like when he's holding the, the skull, like to be yeah. or not to be. Yeah. Yeah. Anything else we want to talk about before we get to my favorite scenes? I have one thing, and it's the when the police come to beat up Megatron, the Orion feels that there's something going on. So he comes back to the to the police headquarters and finds out that two of his uh, recruits, I guess, or police officers have been uh, put offline. And he decides to confront bots that did this. And we find Whirl and two other nameless bots and he fights them all uh, three against one. But in one of the scenes, he uses one of the bodies of his old buddies and transforms it into a bike and rides it which is cool but sad at the same time because <laughs> you're using an, an offline body for this no i could see how that could be a little feeling awkward <laughs> i thought it looked pretty cool too yeah and i guess that will take us to the flashback all right the before flashback. we do that before we do that yeah i want to point out throughout this entire comic just how awesome the vibe is we're getting between Optimus and Megatron. Like, it's like this Batman and Joker-esque vibe. Yes, yes, it is, absolutely. The, but it's the theme that turns I've been out, up every time. Turns out this Joker has some morals. Anyway, to that scene. <laughs> to that scene. So <laughs> this powerful scene, I feel like, is the flashback in which Optimus bursts into the Senate and demands change, that corruption will no longer be tolerated or overlooked, and that the people should always be questioning those in power. There's more to it, and we'll throw up an image. But I love everything about this scene. What do you think? How do we remove you? <laughs> My favorite line. <laughs> I like to do. We see familiar faces in the Senate that we've seen uh, already in past issues. So that was pretty cool to see like we see uh senator ratbat there before he was a set the seda prime uh, i think we also see the senator that megatron kills in megatron origin I forgot his name yeah <laughs> but, yeah uh, he's there too so it's pretty cool good stuff all right let's move to the rod star rating i'm gonna give this one a four and a half i'm gonna just give it a five even though it kind of jumps around a lot, but it could fill in a lot of backstory. Yeah. I would give it a five as well. It's very good. Right on. All right. So, listeners, if you want to get in contact with us, feel free to send us an email. Uh, it's at swervesbarpodcast at gmail.com. Uh, and then, are you guys ready for Transformers Chaos Police Action? We are? Yes. Yes. All right. Who wants to take us out this time? Wait, one last thing. Okay, one, one last, last thing. thing. <laughs> um, once uh, Optimus gets taken away uh, when he confronts the Senate, mm -hmm. but one of one mysterious senator uh, rescues him and uh, mm -hmm. doesn't let him get taken to Garrus's nine, uh, and they also make an upgrade for him in his chest cavity, and he tells him that I suggest you reflect on what's happened these last few days. 
and you ask what your role is in all of this as he as optimus is looking at a mirror with his chest cavity open crazy what crazy plan does this senator have crazy senator <laughs> crazy senator <laughs> all right i think you should take us out then if you enjoyed this episode consider sharing it with your friends and subscribing hope you are all staying safe out there and thank you so much for listening and as always till all are one till all are one till all are one follow us on facebook and instagram at swerves bar podcast you can also find us on twitter at swerves bar if you are interested in more content Try checking out the spinoff D&D Transform and roll out Rise of the World Killers. Let's tune in for a preview now. Well, it looks like we have another partner and I pick up the baby and I take it with us. The baby completely unaware of what's going on just kind of like snuggles up against your arm and falls asleep. It makes it even worse. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Exhilarating. There is also a YouTube channel with bonus content. Link will be provided below. End transmission.